Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage. Kathy Lewis, Elliot Lewis, two of the most distinguished names in radio, appearing each week in their own theater, starring in a repertory of transcribed stories of their own and your choosing. Radio's foremost players in radio's foremost plays. Drama, comedy, adventure, mystery, melodrama. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Elliot Lewis. Good evening. May I present my wife, Kathy. Good evening. Four weeks ago tonight, we did a lovely, fragile story called Call Me a Cab, which was written for us by the very talented Shirley Gordon. You were kind enough to write so many letters about the show that we asked Shirley Gordon to do another script for us, and she did. And we're going to present it tonight. This new story is called The Bunch of Violets, and that's what it's about. Oh, uh, one other thing you should know before we start. It's often been said that a man continually surrounds himself with the same woman. And to prove this tonight, while I'm being Clint Westcott, Kathy is going to play my wife, my mother, and my secretary. Wow. So now the preliminary is over. The Bunch of Violets by Shirley Gordon. I was going to wear my brown suit. I'll look through your socks today. Delsa can fix them tomorrow while she's here. Yeah, oh, check my shirts, too, will you? This collar is about shot. Well, keep it on. Keep it on. It looks all right for one more wearing. Uh, You're not going to have time to eat any breakfast. Well, I'll have some coffee. Where'd that cufflink go? Here. Oh, thanks. This time? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Coffee still hot? I'll pour it. Mm-hmm. Better at least have some toast with it. Yeah. Well, I'll get something after I get to the office. Yeah. You always say that. Certainly hope you do. Oh, I do. Ooh. Hot, hot, hot. Coffee's hot. Well, you've got a few minutes. I'll put a little water in it. Yeah. You'll be home on time tonight, won't you? Yeah, I'll try to be. We told the Martins we'd meet them there at 7.30, you know. Uh-huh. So try to be on time. Yes, I will. Mm. Bye, dear. Bye. Still too hot. Violets, mister? What? Fresh bunch of violets? Only 35 cents. Oh. No, thanks. Oh, come on, mister. Look how pretty they are. No, I'm sorry, son. Everybody loves violets. Well, sure, Sonny, only not now. It's Monday morning and I'm late for work, and I just haven't got any use for any violets. Why don't you take some to work with you? They'll make your day a lot nicer. See if they don't. Now, look, Sonny, you're a good little salesman, but I... Thirty-five cents won't hurt you any. Okay, kid, you win. Give me the violets. Here you are. Keep the change. Gee, thanks, mister. Thanks a lot. You won't be sorry. After all, what harm can there be in buying a little bunch of violets? Good 
morning, Mr. Westcott. Oh, Mr. Simmons sent in some correspondence he wants you to attend to first thing this morning. I put it on your desk. Thanks. It's probably the Johnson account. Yes, it's the Johnson folder. Good. I'll get at it right away. I'll probably need you for dictation in about uh, half an hour. Yes, sir. Oh. Yes, Mr. Westcott? Uh, here, I brought these in for you. I thought you might like to have them on your desk. Files? Thank you, Mr. Wesker. You're welcome. Westcott, if you aren't going to need me just now, would you mind if I went out for a few minutes to get some coffee? Yeah, sure. This is going to take me longer than I thought anyway. Bring some back with you. Yes, sir. Barbara? Listen, can you get out for coffee now? Good. I'll meet you downstairs. I've got something to tell you. <laughs> I don't understand it. You don't understand it. Look, I've been Mr. Clinton Westcott's secretary for two and a half years. And in all of that time, believe me, he's hardly ever even said good morning to me when he came in. Now, on all of a sudden today, he brings me a bunch of violets. Well, that's what I don't understand. Violets. After all, you know, roses are red, violets are blue, and so forth. Barbara, what do you suppose? What do you mean, what do I suppose? What is there to suppose? Ah, that's him. Possible. Well, I've been Mr. Westcott's secretary for, for two, two and, and a half, half years. years. You said that, so all right, he's slow. Slow? Up to now, I thought he was dead. Well, anyway, now that you've discovered old Achilles has a heel, make the most of it. Raise a blister on it. What? Sure, play his game. Lure him right out on a limb and let him dangle until he gives you a raise. Oh, that's ridiculous. It wouldn't work. You're a woman and he's a man. It'll work. Just try it. Yeah? Your coffee. Thanks. Let me just put it down on the desk. Yours are the Sugar. No cream. Right? What? I always remember. Remember what? Ooh. <sighs> Mr. Westcott, do you find me disturbing? Not until today. Imagine. After two and a half years. That's right. What's happened to you today? Nothing's happened to me, Mr. Westcott. Well, something may. Mr. Westcott. In the meantime, however, I should like first to make certain that this Johnson account gets taken care of. Would you like to give me some dictation, Mr. Westcott? Yes, I'd like that very much. Oh, Mr. Westcott. And you may stop calling me Mr. Westcott. Why, Mr. Uh, 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 uh. Clinton. Oh, well, now that's sweet. That's what my mother calls me. Clinton. Yes, like that. Exactly. Imagine. After two and a half years. No, my mother's known me most of my life. I'd like to meet your mother sometime. How about sometime after we take care of Mr. Johnson's account? Oh, yes. Mr. Johnson. You remember him. You were going to give me some dictation. That's right. But on second thought, I'm sure you can compose the letter yourself from my notes. Here you are. I think I'll go out and get a little breakfast. And you can have the report ready for me to sign when I come back. But you didn't drink the coffee I brought you. Was it too cold? Too hot. It burned the burn on my tongue. <laughs> Westcott, good morning. Oh, hi, Ed. Sit down. Have some coffee. I've had it. Ham and eggs are good. Why don't you have a little breakfast? Had it? Say, now, it seems to me you're eating hearty. Consider it. Considering what? This is the first thing I've had to eat this morning. 
Let love eateth its way into the heart of a hungry man, and he shall soon forgetteth his stomach. What does that mean? Well, I guess that isn't the way it goes. I, I think I read it somewhere, but I can't remember exactly how it went. Well, anyway, old man, you get the idea. I don't, and I'm not sure that I want to. All I'd like to know is what's wrong with everybody this morning. You should get a load of my secretary. Well, listen, old man, it didn't take me any two and a half years to get a load of your secretary. I've always thought she was quite a dish. Matter of fact, I'm surprised it's taken you so long to, to start showing her your appreciation. If you know what I mean. What do you mean? What's cooking with my secretary today, anyway? Apparently, from all I hear, old man, you are. From all what you hear, old man? Well, now, look, Clint, old boy, don't go getting sore-headed about it. After all, can I help it if your secretary tells my secretary and my secretary tells me... Tells you what? Why, that you brought her flowers this morning. After all, old man, I'm not the only one who knows. The whole building is talking about it. You mean all this is over that silly little bunch of violets? Uh Uh-uh. So then it was violet. Well, (laughs) I didn't know you had it in you, old man. Well, that only goes to show you I'm not the old man you think I am. I'll see you later. Wait a minute, old boy. You haven't finished your coffee. Mm. What's the matter? Burn your tongue. What tongue? back, Mr. Wesker. Clinton. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Johnson report is ready for you to sign. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there anything wrong? Did you have your breakfast? Yes, I had my breakfast. But you're going out again? Where shall I say you are? Out to lunch. Oh. And I shall want these. Thank you for keeping them for me. The vials? What are you going to do with them? Miss Periwinkle, Ruth, Uh, this may come as a sort of a shock to you, but I feel that it is only fair for you to know. (laughs) There is only one woman in the world who can call me Clinton and get away with it. My mother. Therefore, the violets are for her. You are listening to Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage. Tonight's play, The Bunch of Violets. Remember radio as it used to be, the days when the battery ran down and so did your set? Well, make no damaging admissions about your age, but tune in tomorrow night when there's music in the air over most of these same stations. Your baritone host, Donald Richards, tenor Clark Dennis, Betty Johnson, the Serenaders, and Alfredo Antonini's orchestra take us back to the old-time radio with music, songs, and even the production and sounds of that era. Tomorrow night on CBS Radio. So surprised. You didn't call first, did you? No, I didn't know I was coming. How is she? Oh, fine. Snappy as a turtle, same as always. You know how your mother is. <laughs> yeah. She's up in her room, I think. Mrs. Westcott! Uh, never mind, Anna. I'll just go on up. You might bring some coffee, though. Yeah, of course, Mr. Westcott. Mother! You in here? Why, Clint, whatever's brought you here in the middle of the day like this, is there anything wrong? No, 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 no. Just found myself free this noon, and I've been meaning to get over Well, I'll have Anna fix you some lunch. No, I, I told her just coffee. I had a late breakfast. Oh. Doubt that you ever eat the way you should. Can't say you're looking your best. You're way too thin. Why, I feel just fine, Mother. What is that you have there in your hand, Clinton? bunch of violets. Oh, yes, violets. Uh, 
Would you like to have a bunch of violets, Mother? Isn't that strange? I've never cared for violets. But now you're sure there isn't something wrong. Are you feeling well? Uh, no, no, I feel just fine, Mother. Probably coming down with another cold. You shouldn't wear that light suit on a day like today. No, it, it's a beautiful day outside, and I haven't had a cold in months. Just the same. This is just the time of the year you should guard against catching a cold. Just can't tell about weather like this. What you ought to do is wear that sweater I knitted for you underneath your coat. Never see you wear that sweater anymore. Well, I wore it all winter long, Mother. It's a beautiful sweater, but but it's too warm to wear it now. It's spring. That's just it. Spring colds are so treacherous. I, I feel fine, Mother. Just fine. You always used to catch a cold in the spring. Well, not since I was eight or nine years old, Mother. I think what you ought to do is stop by and have Dr. Greenson give you something. Well, I will. First chance I get, I promise. Today. I'll call him to make sure you do. <laughs> All right, today. And, uh, but I'd pick these up for my office and over to you. Pick that. Uh, they'll probably come sometime. Clinton, dear. Now, tell her she's such a dear girl. Well, she's uh, fine, Mother. She's just fine. Good. Your coffee, Mr. Webster. Oh, thank you, Anna. That yeah, looks good. Be careful, Clinton. Anna's coffee is always too hot to drink. It doesn't matter, Mother. I think my tongue's developed an immunity. Anna, I want you to listen for the door this afternoon. Clinton tells me he's ordered a lovely floral piece for me. It should arrive in just a little while. Now, I'll watch for it, Mrs. Westcott. That's very nice, Mr. Westcott. I see you bought a pretty little bunch of violets, aren't they lovely? Yes, well, if you'd like to have them, Anna, you may. I was just going to take them down to the oh, office, no, but I'd rather... Oh, no, Miss Wett, that's very nice of you, but I have my own little flower garden out in the back, you know, and it just keeps my room looking like a floral shop as it is anyway. Oh, mm -hmm. Now, I wouldn't think of taking your little bouquet away from you. You just keep those lovely violets and enjoy them. <laughs> Sarah, how are you? Well, hello, Mr. Westcott. We haven't seen you in a long time. Hope there's nothing wrong. No, there isn't. But I'd like to see the doctor for a minute if he's in. Oh, certainly. Go right in. He'll be pleased to see you. Oh, good. Oh, uh, do you like violets, Sarah? I just love them. Oh? Well, here, would you like to have oh, oh, these? Oh, any other time I'd love to have some, Mr. Westcott. But you see, the doctor serves at the hospital the rest of this week, and the office will be closed. And as it happens, I'm not going directly home from work tonight, so I'm afraid they'd only die. It'd be a shame just to waste them like that. They're so pretty. Yeah, yeah, well, sure, well. But you can keep them on my desk while you go in to see the doctor if you'd like. Well, yes, thanks. Yes, I would. And don't worry about them. I'll remind you to take them when you leave. Oh, thanks again. Ah, oh, hello there, Clinton. Hello, Doc. Well, Clinton, what brings you here? You're looking well? Oh, no, I'm fine, Doc. Just fine, only... I thought maybe you could give me something to help keep away a cold. Hmm. You feel like you're catching a cold? What have your symptoms been? Well, uh, there haven't exactly been any symptoms, Doc. It's only, well, this time of year, you know. Spring? Well, what's wrong with this time of year? It's beautiful out. But I suppose there's no harm in taking a few precautions, is there? No, that's right, Doc. That's what I mean. Mm-hmm. Well, let me see now. Maybe a new vitamin prescription. That'll be fine. And a shot. That should do the trick. A shot? Uh, well, just the vitamins should be fine, Doc. I think they do the trick. I don't see that there's any need for a shot. Do you? Well, now, it's the surest way, if you really want to protect yourself. Oh, well, yes, but... Well, I, I really feel fine. It's only that... Hey, here now, though. This will just sting a little. Yeah, but, Doc, I don't really think you have... Hey, I... Now, that wasn't so bad, was it? Ooh. Now you can go out in this beautiful, warm spring weather and not worry about catching your death in pneumonia. <laughs> okay. Sarah will fix you up with the vitamin prescription. Yeah, thanks, Doc. It's best to play safe, you know. You, you, you can't tell about this kind of weather. Oh, you're perfectly right. Can't tell. But there's just one thing I'd like to know, Clinton. Oh, what's that, Doc? Uh, when you stopped by to see her today, just how was your mother... <laughs> fine, Doc. She's just fine. <laughs> Wait a minute, Mr. Westcott. Your vitamins. 
Uh, oh, yes. Thanks, Sarah. I almost forgot. And it's a good thing I said I'd remind you. You were going to go right out the door without your violets. <laughs> Any calls for me, Miss Periwinkle? Ruth? No, sir. No, they haven't been, Mr. Westcott. Clinton? (laughs) Forgive me for this morning, but I just couldn't understand what had gotten into you. After all, I've been your secretary for two and a half years, and you've never even... Well... (laughs) (laughs) I guess I usually don't even say hello. Uh... Now, this morning was sort of fun, though, at that, wasn't it? You know, the whole building was talking about it. Yeah, I know. I'm afraid I stopped. Well, no harm done. Wait. Mm-hmm. You still have the violets. I thought you were going to take them to your mother. Oh, yes, I was, but I changed my mind. You want them back again? Oh, gosh. No, if you don't mind. My boyfriend's picking me up tonight. He's the jealous type. Oh, I see. And besides, the building would start talking again. You know how buildings are. Can't keep their mouths shut. <laughs> I guess I'll just keep them myself. I'm becoming sort of attached to them, or vice versa. Oh, uh, will you get a good flower shop on the phone for me, please? I'll take it in the office. Yes, sir. One moment, please. Mr. Westcott, your call's on one. Oh, thanks. Hello, Ruth. The old boy in his office? Yes, he's there. Thanks, old girl. (laughs) You're welcome, old man. To Mrs. Westcott, that's right. Yes, make sure it's very elaborate and have it delivered this afternoon without fail. Good, that'll be fine. Thank you. Well, old man, what are you doing? Fixing things up with your wife? No, with my mother. Well, I don't know how your mother fits into the act, but your sweet violets caper sure causes a stir around here today. Did I tell you the whole building was talking about it? You told me, you told me. (laughs) Well, you can't blame anybody for talking about it, can you? I mean, it isn't exactly like you all of a sudden to show up one morning with a bunch of violets in your hand. How did you ever happen to get them, anyway? A kid was selling them on a street corner, so I bought some. No reason. Well, I think they look just darling on your desk, old man. Don't let anyone tell you any different. (laughs) <laughs> Violets become you. Oh, shut up. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to keep them on my desk, but you can't throw away good flowers just because nobody wants them. Hey, why don't you take them home to your wife? No, 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 not me. You're not getting me into trouble. Me? Bring Mabel home a bunch of violets? <laughs> never be able to explain it in a million years. I'd never be able to convince her I hadn't done something wrong. Why, I wouldn't have a moment's peace for weeks. She'd never stop talking about it. And then on everything I did, she'd be suspicious. Oh, no, you don't. You're not getting me into trouble with your crazy vibe. All right, all right. I know what I'll do. I'll take them with me tonight and give them back to the kid that sold them to me. They're still fresh. Mm-hmm. He can sell them over again, make himself an extra 35 cents, what I should have done in the first place. Let him keep his violets. <laughs> Uh, hello there. Remember me? Violets, mister? Uh, no, look. You sold me some this morning, remember? See? I still have them. Was there something wrong with them, mister? They still look good. They sure do. I imagine they would last me a lifetime if I cared to hang on to them that long. But look, I didn't want them this morning, and I don't want them tonight. And that's why I brought them back to you. But, gee, mister... It isn't that I've got anything against violets, you understand? It's only that I just don't happen to have any use for them. Like I told you this morning. So do me a favor, will you, and just take them back? But, gee, Mr. I, I don't mean I want my money back. I just want to get rid of the violets. Uh, you can sell them over again. They're still fresh enough. But I couldn't do that. It wouldn't be fair. What kind of businessman do you think I am, anyway? I don't sell used merchandise to anybody. Well, okay, then just keep them. Give them away to somebody. I don't care what you but do look, with... But look, mister, I already got more violets than I know what to do with now. I still got six bunches left to sell tonight. Uh, look... Maybe if you bought another bunch to add what you already got. Look, Sonny, I don't want any violets at all. I want you to take these back. Sorry, mister. I just don't accept return merchandise. It's the policy of the management. You sure you don't want another bunch? No, no, I don't. No more violets. Uh, I'll take an evening paper, though. Here, here's the dime. Oh, sure, mister. Glad to be a servant. Here you are. Uh, Look, I'll put the paper around the flowers. I... 
Like, like that. It'll keep them nice and fresh for you. Thanks. You're welcome, mister. Bernice? In here. I'm sorry I'm a little late. I couldn't help it. Well, you better hurry and change. We don't have much time. Well, it won't take me long. You want to take a look at the paper? Yeah, I will. Why are you changing? Button me first, will you, huh? Yeah, sure. Yeah. All right. Here. Here you are. Thanks. You better hurry. No, it won't take me long. What's the headline in the paper tonight? Well, I didn't look at it yet. You look. Hmm? Quiz? What's the matter? What's it say? Why didn't you tell me? Tell you what? That's the nicest thing you've ever done. Whatever made you think of buying me a bunch of vials? A Bunch of Violets, starring Kathy and Elliot Lewis. In a moment, Mr. and Mrs. Lewis will tell you about next week's play. This Saturday night, don't miss The Case of the Trip North, dramatized for CBS radio listeners by Gangbusters. It's a true crime story taken from actual police records. The account of a free shooting, fast and crooked honeymoon that blazed a track from the deep south to the big city, a track of robbery and death. Remember, it's on Gangbusters this Saturday night on most of these same stations presented by CBS radio. And now once again, Kathy and Elliot Lewis. Thank you, Shirley Gordon, for the bunch of violets. And thank you, Kathy, for being all the women in my life. Mother, wife, secretary. While I was your secretary, Charlotte Lawrence was my gossipy friend, Barbara. And when I was your mother, Peggy Weber was her housekeeper, Anna. And it being that kind of a night, when I went to see the doctor, Byron Kane, to his friends, Peggy Weber returned in another uniform to play his nurse. Then Dick Beals sold you the violets on the street corner, and Lou Merrill plagued you at your office. And our deep thanks to all of them. Since it's that time of the year, I find myself in exactly the same position as most of you women listening. My husband, once again, is studying batting averages and pitching styles. And so next week, tell everyone, dear. Next week, a dramatization of Casey at the Bat. Until then, thank you for listening, and good night. Good night. Music for tonight's story was composed and conducted by Fred Steiner. The Kathy and Elliot theme is by Ray Novo, and the program is transcribed and directed by Mr. Lewis. George Walsh speaking. And remember, listen while you work. Enjoy Young Dr. Malone every Monday through Friday in the daytime on the CBS Radio Network.